So everyone, it's that time again. Battlefield is making a return with Battlefield 2042. But don't worry, Apex Legends is still going to be a major focus on this channel. Normally what I do whenever a new Battlefield comes out is I try to flex some epic kill streaks and do a montage. But you know what? We have changed a lot since those days and the channel has grown immensely and I feel like we as a community have grown up since then too. So I'm gonna show some of the epic moments that you see here in the background. But I really want to give you some quick tips from my experience sniping to get you set up for success for the beta to really have a good time. I'm going to also put out a full fledged sniper guide that will come out on release of the game after extensive time of me sniping in Battlefield 2042. I was literally the number one sniper in Battlefield 1 and most know me even on this channel for sniping in Battlefield 5 for my montages. And well, let's just get into it. Tip number one, let's just break down quick and dirty the best loadout for sniping. Luckily, once you apply this loadout, it pretty much applies for the full duration of that round. When you go into the next round, you have to apply these again. You can also change these on the fly, which is also really nice. It's not super in-depth from what I found. Maybe there's more attachments to unlock later, but at least this can get you rocking and rolling just for the beta. Now, first off, I preferred the highest magnification, which is the 4X. I actually would prefer a higher magnification, maybe like a 6x or a 8x magnification, but they've always done this in the beta and we're sticking with a 4X for now. The next thing you should load out is the Arkham Tactical Muzzle Brake for recoil control, which really just helps with the kick, which isn't massive, but it helps a bit. Also the Cobra Grip for better control while standing while sniping, which if you're doing long range shots, is going to be a little bit better for you. The standard issue on the mag size is what I went with. Now to explain my justification on this loadout, I went for control, magnification, and I did not want to sacrifice any damage. Any other selections had some perks, but it was unwilling to sacrifice damage. I felt since most snipers have kick, I'm not gonna have to worry about that kick since I recalibrate my shot in between anyways. And also, everyone has pretty solid health regeneration and you're gonna find that in the beta. So I wanted to make sure I put out as much damage as possible and this was to ensure that I got more eliminations. Now, tip number two. Every class can use a sniper. Well, every character. You can use McKay, Boris, and I mean anyone. You don't need to play Casper specifically to grab a sniper as a loadout. In fact, I liked using McKay, initially because the grapples to get up to height to snipe at weird angles and also the faster ADS movement was also a pretty good perk. What does this mean? It means you can grab any gadgets or other side items that you want. I prefer personally the ammo crate and the grenade. I was not really able to utilize the health pouch because my health regenerated pretty effectively and whenever I wanted to get out of the fight, well, I was sniping, so I got out of the fight even when I was playing aggressively. I ran out of ammo quickly because I stayed alive for a longer period of time. Ammo seems very scarce in the game and I think most people are going to use the ammo pouch more than anything and if you're just learning it, grab yourself an ammo pouch just to get used so you can keep taking your shots. So what is the reason for the various characters? Well, the biggest distinction was a character you decided to play and their perks. Boris I found the least useful for sniping, personally, just because I was wasn't really finding the turret system beneficial for a sniper. This gives again the user a loadout to play however you want to play. I think an alternative to the ammo crate is the armor plates. I just again found I was running low on ammo and the passive healing was already nice. Also the sidearm I liked and most was the revolver with the snipers what I was kind of pairing with. Also the sidearm I liked the most was the revolver. Now this is a good segue to tip number four. Remember the passive healing. It heals you all the way up and all you gotta do is just wait a bit and then you're good to go. So utilize that. Play a little more patiently. Everything is long range. So actually tip number five. The thing you will find in Battlefield 2042 specifically in this map, even though there's 120 players, is that most engagements, if any all engagements, definitely feel mid to long range. I don't know if this is a good thing or bad thing for the franchise. But this is where sniping has its perks. People were really small at a distance, especially the beta, and this is on Conquest. With this distance, there are two factors, bullet velocity and bullet drop. They don't really feel like they matter much until you get at distance. So I'm gonna show two clips here just to give you an example. Notice close range how drop does not matter. Quite literally, it doesn't. Now see in the next clip here where it finally kicks in and actually makes a difference of trying to hit a long range shot. The velocity is also impactful on moving targets and you can really feel it at a distance. See this clip close range? This was a headshot, but also you had to lead just a little bit. Don't be too dramatic on the lead and it does get more dramatic once, you, once the target is further away. This is where sniping was a little bit 
hit or miss because of the bullets. And we're going to talk about that in a future tip here in just a second. So tip number six, when using the higher magnification and when it's long range, it can be a bit odd because the scope is seems thin initially, but is actually really thick. The solution is to aim a tad higher than you think initially, especially when targets are really, really far away. Up close, like I mentioned, pretend there's no bullet drop. You can also pull your scope away quickly so you can see the bullet. Quick and easy way to train for long range. Tip number seven. Because velocity is a bit slow and someone can easily strafe back and forth, you don't need to try and track them. Lead them into your shot, steady your aim, and predict their movement. As you keep playing the beta, you're going to understand people's movement a bit more. Also, the AI bots, kind of like a little snippet tip here, is they are even more predictable in terms of their movement. So don't go too crazy trying to flick everywhere, trying to track somebody who's got an 80, 80 strafe, especially because there is bullet velocity that you have to account for. Tip number eight. The bullets are thinner. Compared to Battlefield 5, the bullet feels less forgiving on what is a headshot. This could be multiple factors. This is my personal experience. The heads are smaller, and so are their bullets. So you have to be more precise, and you should take your time on your shot. But not too long, though. Be sure to at least take your shot so you can at least learn the bullet velocity. But take a moment and use shift to hold your breath and then fire. Tip number nine. This one's a later tip because the sensitivity settings are different from Battlefield 5 and Battlefield 1. So if you're a seasoned veteran, note that even FOV settings scale differently in this game. I found comfortable around 50 to 60 FOV base, but their scaling numbers made no sense. I need to do a little bit more research on this. 100 max FOV felt like 130 in game. So there's definitely some numbers and the base FOV that they had was at nine. Very interesting. I prefer to turn off uniform soldier aiming and turn off ADS scaling. People were already small and there was no reason to make them smaller. Also, I changed my DPI to match what I thought was similar to BF1 and BF5. I usually use a DPI of 1,800, but I changed it temporarily to 1,000 and 1% sensitivity. And the reason why is because I couldn't put decimal values in the menu. This could be changed. I was on an older build of the beta at the time. So we'll see. And I also wasn't able to get access to the config file during this beta. Tip number 10. Drop literally every setting to low outside of textures and model detail. This recording footage, I went for as much frame rate as possible, and unfortunately, I did not have an FPS counter to work with, but it felt pretty solid. I assumed it was about 100 frames plus. This was on a 3080 and an i9-7900, so mileage may vary. I heard a lot of people were struggling initially with it, so just drop the graphics, and as you can see, the graphics look actually not half bad. I put the graphics at high on textures and model detail. This game looks amazing at low graphics, so don't push your rig for no reason. Just go have fun and enjoy the wackiness, especially when the tornado shows up. Now, impressions. I will do a live stream to get better feedback on my thoughts either tomorrow or later today because I had limited time to really play this. And I will say that the game definitely feels more casual, and that's not a bad thing. I think that most people are really going to enjoy it, but if you are a super sweat or you really invest a lot of time and hours into this game, I don't think that you're going to enjoy the cap, especially where they're going in terms of Battlefield 2042. Again, I think the best advice I can give and the biggest tip is just to go in, have fun and have a good time rather than stressing about what the game is trying to do. Again, the goal of this video is to provide some fast tips. I'll give more impressions and I'll put together a full live stream. Some of these things were a bit limited and I did have some pretty decent footage, but it definitely could have been better. Nonetheless, I hope you guys enjoyed the tips. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys all in the next video.